So yeah, um, that's a little bit about me. I mean, I'm not um, a hugely um, interesting person, but I was hoping to, to vlog myself because I wanted to start doing more things that are interesting. Um, I wanted to start doing things that I can report back to people with. Like I did this, I went there, I, I saw this. But also, you know, I've experienced, I'm 32, I've experienced some life. I'm not the most experienced person out there. I'm not trained to give advice on certain aspects of life, etc. It's just all opinion. It's all about my opinion, my experiences, and I want to share it. So, okay, so first of all, today um, I wanted to talk just very briefly about um, depression. And I know that that's a really, really excuse the pun, but a sad subject in, so some, for some people. Um, but depression to me is an important subject, mainly because I've seen it a lot and I'm aware of it in terms of how it affects many people. I have experience having some depression and also trying to manage it. So depression is yeah, tricky subject to talk about. So, in a nutshell, depression for me, my understanding of it is, is first of all, it's just a word. So a description, or a, a word that means something, um, and the something is a collection of symptoms, and a collection of symptoms are things like low mood, or um, the inability to motivate oneself, or the uh, inability to uh, see the wood for the trees in some ways um, you know um, it's the um, the big scale of feeling down and sad um, not wanting to go out and explore and do things and see people versus the opposite end of the scale where the more severe end of depression is things like self-harm or even the worst case scenario which is suicide um, but in between those big boundaries, that big gap, you've got all sorts of different things. And it all depends on the individual. So some people can be depressed and have just purely a low mood. They can just have a very, they can come across miserable, but really they may be suffering with a mild form of depression or some form of depression. And some people don't realize that that's the case. And they can prejudge people quite quickly. And my experience is has taught me not to do that, not to prejudge people. I look at people now and I, I it's funny because when I look at people I, 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 uh, I see that um, a bit of an analysis going on in my head um, and I catch myself and I'm aware of myself jumping to conclusions and we all do it, we're all guilty of doing it, we jump to conclusions about a homeless man or a, or a, a homeless man who's um, perhaps on drugs or a person who lives in a rundown place or a, a rich person person with a business suit. We make, we make assumptions on people and we shouldn't. So there's lots of videos out there that, that talk about that and I find them interesting. I find it de depression is an interesting assumption for some people. Not everyone is depressed, not everyone is miserable, sometimes they are depressed. It's, it's, you know, you've got to be open to it. Be careful when you assume that someone is suffering with depression because they could just simply be having a bad day. <laughs> um, we've all had bad days where, like I said, the car won't start, work, you can't get to work, you've got to catch the bus, then you can't got, you've got no money to get the bus or the taxi or the cab, whatever. And then you get to work and then your boss is angry with you and you come home, oh, you've got bills through the door. You know, uh, you fall over down the stairs on the way back home or something like that and then it just tops off, you've got physical, mental stress, oh, we've all done it. But depression is different. Depression is more of creeping onto a chronic problem um, or very, very, it can be acute obviously, but it can be very distinctive in some people. So just be careful with prejudging, be careful with assuming. Um, that's what my advice is, I suppose. Um, from my own experiences. Um, I've had some people prejudge me and they prejudge me based upon my mood. Um, I am a quiet guy in a way, so this is hard for me to be able to sort of do this and then post it up online. Um, but I'm a quiet person, I keep myself to myself usually, um, but I always try and do the right thing by people and I always try and make the right decisions. 
Um, I, I'm not really much of a selfish person. I can honestly put my hands up and say that because I'm just not. You know, I, I tend to always try and think about putting people first, especially my kids and my wife. Um, you know, so but it's not always that easy. I'm no saint. You know, it's not it's not as straightforward as that. But my principles in life are that depression, however, creeped in on me a number of, a long a long time ago. And I was aware of its presence because um, I started to think very negatively about things, um, even though they were positive. I also lost a very, a very ma a large amount of confidence in myself as well. Uh, my ability to talk to people, my ability to work, my ability to learn, my ability to go out and even socialise, everything, everything suffered at some point to a degree, where I felt crap at everything, just crap at everything. And... That was not a very good place to be, you know, and it was hard work trying to come forward from that and move forward. Now, that was my form of depression. That was me and what I struggled with. But there are people out there that struggle with depression who um, have a lot of trauma in their past and they can suffer with depression because of that. It's always worth keeping in mind when we assume, when we, when we try not to assume that they could have, people can have more significant trauma in their past than others. We should allow them room, space and understanding. And my experience with depression is with people with trauma or, or past histories where they, where they may have had depression as a result of that problem, they don't get over it very quickly. It becomes um, embedded in them, ingrained in them, and it can be a big challenge to even try and change their personality to make things better for themselves or to try and change their outlook to make things better for themselves that's hard work harder work than these sort of the milder forms of depression um i've seen a lot of friends who have had depression i've seen people that have had depression and they've had really severe uh, depression where they've not made it through um and that big eye opener for me so you know <sighs> I wanted to do this video because about the subject because it's I'm proud of the fact that society can talk about this more and I'm in an, I'm in I'm alive in mid almost mid thirties in a generation where we can where we can talk about these things. It's not perfect at all, but it's better than what it was, and I'm proud that we can do that now because it was it's, it's such a it's such a difficult subject but important subject. Um, I, I want. I, I wouldn't mind people sort of asking questions about what their thoughts of depression are and if they've got symptoms and things like that. You know, fire away questions. Give me some feedback underneath, whatever it is. You know, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, but in a summary, I've talked a little bit about that, the signs of depression and things. In a summary, though, to conclude it all, for me... When I was trying to get away from my form of depression as an individual, the biggest thing for me that worked was having a goal and having an, or having an objective. I find it even now, I'm not depressed now, I find that having a goal, however, is crucial because if I don't have a goal in life or an objective, whether that be a, an objective for a week's time, or a goal for a month's time, or even a few years or a year, it doesn't matter. It, what matters is that you've got a plan. If you don't have a plan, you can be subjective, you can be open or at risk of feeling in limbo, like you don't belong. You can be, you may be at risk of feeling like things like um, lost, I suppose. And if you have a plan, if you have an end game, if you have a goal, I, fi I find as a person, as an individual, like I said, that it helps me to focus on the future. I can make steps towards that plan. And as a result, my mind is taken away from some of the sad feelings or emotions and things like that. Um, and I start to uh, subconsciously have a bit more fun and open up and giggle and laugh and things like that because I've got my plan, I've got my goal. My, my, um, my future is, I know where I'm going. Um, so my experiences 
um, I want to get across on this video are that if you have a plan, if you have a goal, an objective to work towards, you can usually distract yourself away from being depressed. And by the time you've realized that you're not feeling quite depressed anymore, you can look back at your, your life or you can take a break and take a breather and say, actually, I'm getting where I want to be. I'm quite happy with this. And then the depression's kind of seeped away. I mean, that is easy, easier said than done. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Depression is not a big point matter of uh, conversation around the world uh, with many, many millions of people because it's so easy. It's because it's so hard to deal with. So don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to downplay a depression or anyone else's depression at all. I fully sympathize with the fact that it can be debilitating to the nth degree. It can be so lonely that you feel that there's no one there or no, no way out. And I, I am aware of it. I am aware of it. And I acknowledge that. And I respect everybody in the world that deals with that kind of depression because it is traumatic. Um, and if my videos can um, help by even making you aware that there are people out there, including me, that are aware of these problems and this level of depression, then so be it. Because we are aware. There are people aware. Talking about it is also a big problem. People don't tend to talk about their problems anymore and they tend to wrap them up in a big ball and keep them shut. But many, many people have always said, and you'll hear it a million times by everybody else, that talking about your problems is always going to help and blah, blah, blah. It's easier said than done. Again, it's hard. You know, Even if you can identify why you are depressed, how the hell are you going to try and get the courage to pluck up, the courage to, to go and talk to someone about it? And how the hell are you going to do it with a stranger? I don't know. You know, like a psychologist or a counsellor. So, my video, I hope, gives you some understanding that you're not alone. Um, if you've got depression, you know, you can try these things, like maybe take my experiences, for example. The goals worked for me. Um, the objectiveness of, of life worked for me. Having a, a pathway to follow and following it, that helped. If not, you know, the next step is perhaps to consider even talking about it because if you don't talk, that's where it can get bundled up, like I said. Um, and then you've got problems with the, the ball getting bigger inside. And if the ball gets bigger inside, it's got to go somewhere. It's going to go out. It's going to explode. Um, so, but I find, I, yeah, I find the pressure. I find it incredible because in this day and age, we've got so much entertainment, you know, like YouTube. Facebook, movies, games, videos, whatever it is, phones at our disposal where we can go to bed and go to sleep with mobile phones now to keep us entertained right up until the point of where we go to sleep. <laughs> you know, you would think, how can anyone get depressed with all that distraction? Well, you'd be surprised. I think we'll all be surprised uh, what people live with. Um, so I suppose in conclusion then for me, my experiences and my understanding of depression as an individual as a standard normal guy uh, are in fact try and get an objective try and get a goal in place and a plan distract yourself but also have something to look forward to talk about it talk about it talk about it and I think other than that is for you people that maybe don't have depression you know um, including myself as well we all try and look at people in a very understanding way don't prejudge don't accuse uh, you take care of humankind and humankind will take care of you and that's how it should be for everybody I know it doesn't work like that I know that's easier said than done well peace you know, humankind if you're good to someone else they're normally good to you um, just think about that when you're around someone that you feel maybe depressed if you feel that someone's quiet if you feel that someone's having a bad day Try and look after them. <laughs> Show them some human compassion. You know, it'll make you feel so much better knowing that you've made someone either smile or if you just help someone out, even if it's making them a cup of tea or coffee because you see that they're down. That one act will make a million 
percent difference to that person at that moment in time. It's not going to take the depression away, you know, it's not going to cure anybody, but it's going to make a difference at that moment. And it's the little differences over a big period of time that can possibly sometimes help. You know, people should be a little bit more understanding in that way. And I know there are a lot of good people out there, there's a lot of fantastic people, there's some people that aren't too aware of it. And that is fair enough, it's human nature. But if we can make that nature a little bit more kind to one another, I think that we'll we'll start to see not only other people receiving that feedback feel better, but actually the people giving it, the people doing that, behaving that way, understanding people better and acting better to people is going to pay off. And just to end the video, I, I watched a few YouTube videos um, of... Um, I can't remember the name, I'll try and link it underneath and below, but there's a couple of people, there's a, there's a bloke, I, a chap I watched who um, helped out a homeless guy and it was fantastic to see and I'm not being funny, I mean the guy's got a Lamborghini, you probably know when I say that he's got a Lamborghini, you probably know which video I'm talking about, but you know what, And people, he got a lot of grief for that video and I saw, I saw a lot of comments underneath about him being a, a fraud and taking advantage and that really irritated me. It really irritated me because they're seeing the superficial act. The super, seeing the superficial act. What did the guy do? The guy went in his own time, he went out of his way, regardless of the fact that he was in a Lamborghini, he could have been in uh, a larder or a or a bloody mini, I don't know. He could have been on his push bike for all I care. The fact that he went out of his way, okay, and he found somebody to help meant that that person that he chose had his life turned around and it could have been one out of a million people on that in that city or a thousand people who were homeless but it was the one person that got some help and some support and some human compassion because of one person and i think that his video was fantastic um and i think that if we i, th I agree with him you know if we did have more people that acted in, in ways like that. You don't have to have a Lamborghini. You could just have, you could have a, you could have a scarf and a set of gloves on a cold winter's day, and you could pass them to someone living on the street at that time to warm them up a bit. It could make all the difference. Uh, hi guys, sorry about that. There was um, a bit of a break in between the video there. That my camera died. Um, and also I had two phone calls and one of which was about a job uh, that I've just managed to get. Um, I work as a physio so I'm, uh, as a locum as well, I'm in and out of contracts all the time and I was uh, left without a contract recently uh, and uh, over Christmas but I've got a new one now so chuff with that but what I was talking about before was um, scarf and gloves. <laughs> uh, it was about making simple gestures to make someone's day it was about supporting people and um, with depression because it's such a silent um, challenge for people to deal with sometimes you know, people don't over, like I say you know people talk about it more it's, it's more talked about by professionals by other people but it's not we, we still sometimes as individuals find it difficult to come forth with information and come forth with how we feel that we've got depression and things like that so my my point was that um and, and the chat that i was talking about which i'll say i'll link you know he, his actions made a difference to someone that was homeless um your actions or my actions and i always think about this could could make a difference to someone that's suffering with depression um and you will never ever know that that is the case because you won't see them again if you see a stranger or if you see someone that you don't know and you act that way you won't see them again but if it's a friend or a, an acquaintance someone that you don't see so often but you do a good gesture for um, because you notice that they may be down you notice that they may be depressed you know that can make the world a difference um, for people with depression you know um, don't lose hope um, say these things eat that and all of the things I've been saying is easier said than done. And I know people have probably said it to you a million times, but you can create your own hope. You can create your own future. 
and it's not a case of taking the red little pill or the blue pill, you're in control of your own fate. And using a goal, using an objective, things like that are all determining your future and determining your situation at that time. Again, it's easier than done, but I think strongly about it. Uh, I feel strongly about it. And with some forms of depression, it can be managed that way. Anyway, I've droned on quite a lot, guys. Um, I really, really appreciate you watching me. First video that I've ever made um, and put up on here. Um, uh, if you want to see uh, a little bit more about how my wife and I met, because I'll talk in more videos and vlogs about my wife and I, and obviously my three children um, from my previous marriage. Um, you know, such good positivity from that video because we met online twelve and a half thousand miles away, and now we're married. And you know, um, please feel free to to have a look at that video, and and you'll probably get to know us a little bit more. Um, uh, yeah, I was a bit thinner back then, uh, so I'm not quite as thin now, but I'll get there. I, I will get there. So my vlogs will be coming out soon and it will be including um, a bit more about my wife, but my, my my children, you know, information about dad, uh, being about being a dad and how to manage certain aspects of being a dad, but obviously perhaps a dad's perspective not being there all the time, so I don't get to see my children every day, it's every other week. So I can help some dabs out there perhaps just by talking to them and you guys can talk to me. I really want to be talked to and ask questions of because um, I want to interact with the rest of the world and whoever watches these videos, you're obviously watching them for a reason, you've typed in the title or similar title and um, I hope that we can help each other and I can make more videos which are helpful and informative and not so boring perhaps as well. But anyway, um, take care and enjoy the rest of the day or night and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!